Hello, everybody, and welcome to your fourth, the fourth part in doing animation uh, when we're making a platformer. So, uh, this is the last part, and we should get through screen transition with animations in this tutorial. So, let's get right back into it. Now, be because we have images in our, uh, we're using images now, we're using an image for our transition. We need to init the initialize the image add-on, so make sure you have that. Also, in the screen manager dot h, make sure you include uh, the image, uh, the image dot h, okay? Or else you won't be able to load image, load images. It will no load a null image for you, which is what you don't want. Okay, so anyways, if we go to our stream manager .h, uh, where we left off is that uh, uh, we have basically what we're gonna do. We, we set our trend, uh, our, our alpha to zero, and when we do that, our, our increase is gonna be set to true. Okay, so there's some some other things that we gotta do. So if we go to screen manager .h, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to be making a private boolean variable called start transition okay and uh, in this we're going to uh, we're going to say start transition is equal to true okay so uh, what we're we can put this in the initializer load content I'll put it in right here it's going to be go to false by default. So if start transition is true, then it's going to call this uh, method right here. If it's false, then it's not going to call it. Uh, and another thing before I even continue, notice uh, we know that our bitmaps are pointers. Uh, so uh, if we go to our transition dot load content, so that is in. Uh, if we go to animation dot cpp. So in our unload content, what we do is that we uh, oh, I didn't even put it back there. Okay, but before uh, uh, what we did, we destroyed these the uh, source rect and the regular image. We want to erase that. Uh, the reason being is that uh, when we destroy the image right here, we're destroying the pointer or the memory, whatever that's pointing to. So we don't really need to delete them, or we'll get into we'll get errors when we unload our content and uh, if we go to main.cbp we're gonna add unload content to the bottom of our code uh, like so uh, after the game loop so anyways uh, uh, so if we continue so we're gonna say that uh, in our update we're gonna say that if not uh, start transition then we don't update now sometimes you might want to update you might have some things going on in the background etc etc but for now we're going to say that if it's not uh, if we are transitioning then we don't want an update and we're going to have in our draw command we're going to say if start transition is equal to true uh, then we're going to uh, do transition dot draw and we can draw it because uh, or we're deriving from the animation class so even if we since even though we didn't inherit the draw command we could still um, um, access the one from the base class so the reason why we still want to draw it because when we f we want it to look like it's fading out so we still show the game elements on the screen but we slowly fade out uh, so what we want to do now is that if transition is equal to true then we want to update it and we need to get an input so what we want to do is we want to go to game screen dot h and in the protected or no in the public section uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say input manager uh, get input and in the game screen dot cpp we're going to say input manager uh, game screen get input and we're gonna return the input so if we go to right here we're just gonna say current screen uh, get input okay so we get our input now we're gonna use our uh, our get alpha so we're gonna say that transition if transition dot get alpha is greater than or equal to 255 
then we're gonna reset it to 255 so in case if it's over and then we're going to do all our transition stuff there but first we're just gonna put AL rest uh, 1.0 so now we're gonna take all the stuff from the add screen and we're just gonna copy this we're gonna cut it and we're going to uh, we're gonna put it right in between these two okay so uh, so we're going to bring back our our new screen again. So we might take it out one more time, but for the, for this tutorial's sake, we're going to add this back in the new screen. And if we go back to our screen manager, uh, we're going to say new screen there. And in the add screen command, we're going to say that uh, new screen is equal to screen. Now, if we notice before, uh, in our fade animation class in the CPP, we, it, the fading didn't happen unless uh, is active was equal to true. So what we gotta do now is that we gotta make some um, get and set methods for that. And for now, we'll need to set one, but we're gonna be doing a get one because we're gonna need to get it sometime in the future. Uh, so we're gonna say void set is active, and we're gonna have a value and we're going to have a, a bool get is active and I just made a mistake uh, I should be bool value so if we go right here what we're going to do is we're going to say void animation set is active bool value and we're going to set is active equals to the value and for the getting it get is active we're just gonna return is active okay so what we're gonna go back to our screen manager dot cpp and we're gonna say transition dot set is active is equal to true okay so uh if we adding a new screen we said that equals to true so that means we're gonna start our animate our transition so once we start our transition, what we're gonna do, we're gonna say that else if transition dot get alpha is less than or equal to zero, uh, then we set start transition equal to false, and we set uh, is active equal to false. So what is going on here? So basically, what we do is that uh, at the start of it, we set uh, alpha to zero. Okay. Uh, so uh, we set alpha to zero and when it updates uh, since increase is true it's going to increase it based on our fade speed okay so it's going to increase it uh, so if our fade speed is one then our new alpha value is going to be one so neither of these statements are true okay so it's going to increase until it reaches 255 it's going to uh, set the alpha to 255 it is going to we're going to do all our screen transition stuff and then we're going to uh, rest for one second and then we're going to decrease and it's going to fade out and then uh, we're going to do transition dot uh, when it reaches zero so when it's fully faded out so when it's not showing the black image anymore uh, then we uh, set everything to false now this is the opposite way of, of how fading goes so just so you don't get confused uh, normally when something has an uh, alpha value of, uh, of like uh, zero it means yeah so when it has like a thing like zero it's fully uh, how do I explain this? It's it's kind of I don't know if it will confuse some of you guys, but uh, when it's fully two when it's two hundred and fifty five, normally that means that the object is not uh, like that. Uh, it's showing something fully right, but in this case, it's it's fading out everything because uh, what we're doing is we're showing a black image. So therefore, the greater the value of alpha is, the greater um, the more everything will fade out okay uh in this case but uh yeah that's how that's how it's basically working i don't know if i'm going to confuse you guys with that but uh if you guys are confused you can just uh inbox me or something or leave a comment or something uh so f that is it for our transition so if we were to draw this let's see if, if it actually runs properly or let's see if we run into any errors 
so it says succeeded so when I press enter if you notice it slowly fades out and then it waits a second and it starts to fade back in uh, and I changed the I don't know if I changed the positions did I no I didn't so it slow, slowly starts to fade in and I know it looks like it just pops up like on the screen like that but it's just fading in uh, and when you can see it then it looks like it kind of pops up and most likely you're not going to want it to fade that quickly so uh, if we went to fade animation uh, we might want to change the fade speed to like say 5 or 10 and you might want to have something that you can modify the fade speed etc etc as well uh, so for different things you have different fade speeds but yeah so there you have it so fading at uh, that that's how the fading is gonna go and if you don't like since it's fading like kind of looks like it's, it's popping up uh, I'll show you uh, I'll show you exactly I'll show you that's actually working so I'll pause the video and I'll show you Okay, so uh, now I, I just bought, got a lot of get and, and set functions, so uh, you don't have to worry about these right now. Um, so basically, I just set it so that once it uh, once it zooms out, then it, it will uh, pause every 0.5 of a second, just to show you that the alpha value is not skipping or it's not going too fast. The reason it might might be zooming in and out at inconsistent rates is because we don't have a set uh, timer. Uh, in our updates we don't have the the timers or the updates or anything set up um right yet you know you know what i mean like we just we don't have any timer routine set up so they run at any uh at the rate of the speed of your computer uh so i set the phase speed back to zero again i mean back to one so it increases by one every time and uh uh, it shows that it, it increases by one each time so it, it doesn't increase doesn't decrease so if you notice it zooming in faster or whatever it's just based on um, your hardware um, yeah the hardware that the speed is running at so once we get timers and stuff into uh, the into the while into the game loop uh, then you'll see uh, um, like zooming in and out uh, I mean fading in and out at a consistent rate so I hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it and bye